more and more consumers are concerned with how farm animals are being treated? How can we ensure that they continue to purchase our products? How about we label them all natural? No one knows what that means. Yes, excellent. Now, how can we get them to pay, say, oh, I don't know, $10 for a carton of eggs? Perhaps we use a term like, like, free range. But master, that sounds like they'll have outdoor space. It does, doesn't it? But it's actually the same building, just with a tiny door that most of them will never access. And if they do, they'll only be able to see the outdoor space. <laughs> We're talking about factory farms and deceptive labels on this thrilling installment of The Rotten Truth. <laughs> labels can be really helpful. For instance, they let us know how much actual juice is in our OJ how spicy our salsa might be, or whether or not pregnant ladies should smoke cigarettes. They also let me know whether it's a good idea to put these Legos up my nose. Thank goodness for that label. Otherwise, I might not have thought twice before sh shoving it up my nose hole. But labels can also be incredibly deceiving and misleading. That is especially true when it comes to the marketing of animal products like meat, dairy, and eggs. The nice picture that you see on the outside of the package with the big red barn and animals running around beautiful green hills. That's called marketing. That's not actually where those animals are raised. The reality for 99% of animal products looks something much more like this. Corporations want you to feel good about buying their products. And how would you feel if you saw photos of animals crammed into small spaces where they can barely turn around, standing in their own feces? Anybody hungry? You may be familiar with the term greenwashing, where corporations use terms like sustainable and eco-friendly to profit off of consumers who are looking to buy products that are better for the environment. Humane washing is the same idea. Companies use deceptive labels to make people who care about animals more likely to buy their products. When in reality, the conditions for animals with some of these labels might not be that much different, especially from the animal's perspective. Take this commercial, for example. At Fairlife, this is our simple promise to believe in better. Oh, fair life, you guys are the best. Wait, 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 what? what's that? My producer is telling me that fair life is actually full of it. Here's some footage from the largest undercover dairy investigation ever from, wait for it, fair life facilities. In our 10 years of being undercover, we have never seen such consistent, constant abuse. I think we can all agree that that footage paints a slightly different picture than their advertisement does. Now let's look at a few of the labels you are probably familiar with. Here's what Cage Free actually looks like. Tens of thousands of chickens in a windowless shed. Here's what free range, a term with multiple meanings and barely regulated by the USDA, actually looks like. How about the organic label? Where does that come from? As the existential threat of antibiotic resistance became more of a cultural concern, the meat industry responded by actually removing antibiotics from some of the animal feed. This led to flashy labels like antibiotic-free chicken and organic becoming more and more popular with consumers. What wasn't advertised by the meat industry is that the conditions the animals were kept in didn't change. So the animals started to suffer from disease and infection at higher rates. What that means is that when we eat antibiotic-free poultry, we're eating animals that were more likely to suffer from disease and infection. Then there are words like all-natural and pasture-raised, which have no legal meaning. As it stands, essentially any producer can put a humanely raised label on their animal product, which renders the term pretty much meaningless. These corporations have it set up to where we, the consumers, are the ones that have to do the digging to find out where our animal products actually come from. It shouldn't take Gandalf trying to discover the history of the ring level research to know where our animal products are coming from. Do not be fooled by these deceptive labels. 99% of animal products come from factory farms where suffering is not only inevitable, but it's actually built into their very business model. But don't fear, there have never been more plant-based options. 
And one great thing about plants, you don't have to worry if your broccoli was treated humanely before someone chopped its head off. We are Factory Farm and Awareness Coalition here to tell you what the deceptive meat and dairy corporations do not want you to know. Do these greedy mega corporations make you want to pull your hair out too? Well, you can make a huge impact by liking, sharing, and commenting on this video. That is how we beat the YouTube algorithm and spread this information. Doing that is activism. And that one simple task moves us closer to ending factory farming. Subscribe to our YouTube page so you don't miss an episode. And I will see you on the next installment of The Rotten Fruit.